do I have a, can you see that? I think I have a little gnat flying there in front of my lens. Do not interrupt me, wherever you are. Hello friends, this is Miro and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to do an update video that is very overdue on my Mars Hydro Light and the Grow Tent experience. I received the light in February of 2021 and I did post a video about it then. If you are interested to see that video, I will link it somewhere in the head area. Somewhere there it will pop up magically. In that video I did say that I was gonna test the light and the tent for three months and do an update video after that. Three months have passed, but there's no update. And truth to be told, the reason why there was no update is because first, I finished the review early. I only used the tent for two months. I'm still using the light three months after. It's been five, six months. I don't know how to count time. It's a mystery. Hours, minutes, and seconds. These are three units of time, or intervals of time, we use every day. Thousands of years ago, primitive man noticed daytime and nighttime. Excuse me, but I just find it pretty ironic that that's how we have been observing the time in the previous year and a half or so. Very telling. The light is always hanging in the back, but it is always turned off in the videos because it is very bright. It just doesn't work really well. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but that's quite strong. And if I turn it off, yeah, you can see a lot of the plants do benefit from that light. Doesn't look very good, does it? Some of the plants that are under the light or that are near the light are continuing to grow and you will see all those updates but I specifically wanted to talk about the grow tent experience what I thought about it and I will divide this video into several sections that will be time stamped below so first I will tell you a little bit about the light and the tent some of the specifications then I will talk about 10 plants so I chose 10 examples we will get into that and then I will tell you a bit about pros cons you know the good the bad and the ugly and the final part will be would I actually buy it with my own money because I did receive that light so I could make the video meaning I did not have to pay for it if you're interested in any of those parts you can just skip or you can stick with me and we can have a lovely journey together. I did not have to change the accent for that, but that's the kind of day that we are having. Mars Hydro reached out to me in late December of 2020, I believe, and they wanted me to do a video just reviewing the Grow Light. I did receive both the Grow Light and the Grow Tent, and I started my review in the February of 2021. The light that they sent me is TS-1000. It is a 150 watt light. It is very, very strong. It is a dimmable light, which really helps, especially when you're growing inside a grow tent, but it can go up to 150 watts. And trust me, when you are there at 100%, it is very bright. It is like having a sun in your room. They also sent me a grow tent, which is 70 by 70 centimeters and 160 centimeters tall. Now, if my conversions are correct, that's 2.3 feet times 2.3 feet by 5.3 feet in height. I don't know if those measurements are correct. You will have to see that for yourself, but it's 70 times 70 centimeters. Really, we should all switch to centimeters and meters. Like if you agree. I put about 40 to 50 plants in the tent. There was a phase when I just really wanted to cram everything in there to see how the plants would grow. And, you know, part of that is my curiosity, but also because I am very limited with space. This section here that you see, which is about, I would say, maybe two, three meters wide and then four meters long, is all the grow space that I have. When I put a 70 times 70 tent in this grow space, it takes up a lot of room. I did put some shelves inside, some small IKEA shelves, and that helped to put more plants inside, but I really need every inch or every centimeter of this grow space. I will only focus on 10 plants today. I will mention some of the others, and the reason why we are focusing only on 10 is 
First, this video would be way too long. We know Miro likes to talk. We know Miro can't shut up. And the second reason is because of my root mealybug treatment. If you want to see that video, it will also be linked somewhere here. Because of my root mealybug treatment, some of the plants from the tent are not looking so great now. They actually are looking worse than before they went into the tent. If you are interested, you could watch that video. But basically, to tell it in short, I use dishwashing detergent in very small quantities, but I still managed to burn my leaves. And on some of the plants that I will show you today, you will see sign of that damage, but I think they still look presentable enough and you can see how much they grew. The first plant that I will show you is my Hoya species Gunung Gading. Here it is. First, you will see some white spots on the leaves and that is just because of the spider mite treatment. It is sulfur, it is cumulus, and it really helps with red spider mites. So you can see the plant, it did grow a lot. This, first of all, this plant only had one vine. Now it has two of them. I did not cut it back. I think it was about, it was reaching not even the end of this trellis. It is the same trellis. I did repot it after my root mealybug experience, but this plant was much smaller. I actually clipped a vine. So let me unclip it so you can see how big this plant got. You can see here. It goes all the way here. I would say the original vine ended about here, something like that. All of this would be new growth. But aside from that, just behave yourself. It also pushed out another new vine with a couple of notes. A couple of leaves fell off because I did repot it and I did treat it for root mealybugs and actually one leaf is damaged which i noticed just today see that the damage where dishwashing liquid touched the leaves or that solution touched the leaves it did not bloom in the tent and i need to just put it back on the trellis let's behave you know, I did mediocre. I'm not gonna even say I did the best that I could do. So this plant definitely grew a lot. I am very impressed. It is no longer under my Mars LED grow light. It is growing under LED tubes. It is under 20 watt LED tubes. So the light is significantly weaker than it was. And it was never very close to my Mars Hydro light. In the tent, this plant had that reddish leaf that everyone loves about Hoya species going on gating, but it no longer has those. Now the leaves are predominantly green and that's just due to the light. The next plant that was in the tent was Alocasia black velvet and she's drunk. We definitely need to work a bit on this. Oh, this leaf is gonna go. This leaf will go. It is broken down there, but it only had two of these very, very small leaves. One of them is gone and it's just that the base of this plant is getting quite fat. It wasn't like that. It's getting quite chunky and then these leaves, it, they just crack at the base. Mind you, I'm not an Alocasia Pro, but you can see that the leaves are getting very big. Comparing to the original, that's huge. I mean, it's not huge compared to my head, but comparing to the original, leaves so it's doing really well it is in this plastic cup with no drainage because that helps me keep my alocasias alive i do not get to water them in time this plant is still under mars grow light in the back i don't know if you can see there is like a white pot let me try to zoom in right there there is this white pot and that's a different effect that I wanted. It is staying in that white cover pot. The white cover pot is kind of hanging off the side of that green shelf and the light is, I would say, just above there. It's still quite far away from the light. The only difference is that now I keep the light at 100%. And this plant is doing really well. It's still growing really, really well. One thing that I noticed about alocasias is that they definitely need a lot more light than I ever imagined. That's probably why alocasias never did well for me before. I'm giving them a way more light than ever. I would say on the upper spectrum of bright light. Another alocasia that did extremely well is my alocasia Beginda Silver Dragon. We don't have any more baby leaves, but 
they were that size approximately and you know the the leaf is much much bigger it also has now a very chunky base of so those leaves did fell off i am having some baby bulbs here i can count at least three the leaf is much bigger than it was before it is very healthy it grows really fast it does hold on to leaves much better than alocasia black velvet and i'm not really sure why that is once again no alocasia expert here it's amazing how much they grew i think this one is the first leaf that grew with mars hydrolite and then each leaf got bigger and bigger the next plant didn't do exceptionally well in the beginning but towards that two month period it started to grow and i think it's just because it wasn't really rooted when i put it in the tent so it did need some time to take off but it is my syngonium mojito or the model syngonium it is this plant here it only had one leaf i think this was the original leaf it pushed out a leaf that never really opened it looked very ugly then it pushed out this leaf that wasn't very variegated even though the plant was under a lot of light i don't know if we can see and then it decided it wants to be a good plant and we have this leaf with lots and lots of variegation i don't know if you can see that on the camera but there's definitely a lot of variegation the leaves after that look stunning I did move it to the back of that green shelf, so it no longer really stays under Mars Hydrolite. I'm working on getting some LED lights there, so it can continue to grow. I don't think a strong grow light is necessary for these Syngoniums, but it did really, really well in the tent. And I'm very happy with the growth. I think if it started to grow sooner, maybe it would have even been larger. This plant was on the bottom of the tent, so it was very very far away from the light it was shaded by other plants in the tent and maybe that's the reason why it didn't grow so fast but i typically don't think that syngoniums re require all that much light so that's why i placed it there nevertheless the growth is spectacular right if anyone says in the comments that this isn't good that i, sh I should have expected more then you know, just don't do it we have two orchids from the tent first one is this cross with Neostylus Lucineri and Neophenicia Falcata. And this is Neostylus Baby Angel. That's not the name, they now changed it to Vanda Costylus, I think. It did bloom. It only has this one tiny flower because, well, the rest of them dropped because I was so good at recording this in time. It started to produce flower spikes in the tent and then I took it out and then it continued to bloom, of course. This is typically considered a higher light orchid so what i did is i put it very close to the light it was 30 centimeters i would say away from the light and that was too much the light was on 60 percent, so it wasn't really even the strongest it could be but this plant had quite a few burns we actually even lost one leaf here because it was so burned it got dried out really really fast i had to water it a lot we still have some burns here i'm, I'm not sure if that shows Higher light orchids definitely don't want that much light. I actually put my Rhynchostylus that didn't bloom in the tent, but that one got burned. This is my other Vendacious orchid, it's Rhynchostylus, and this one got serious burns. I think we lost two or three leaves. You can see some of the burns here, and I think the rest see this is another one of the burns there now it's looking much healthier it is greener it it got yellow it it really started to look very yellow and i just thought you know it's a highlight orchid it's fine but definitely not as highlight as that uh, mars hydrolite can provide this plant also bloomed in the tent this is a phalaenopsis Violacea Malaysia crossed with Violacea indigo and it's wonderful. It's gorgeous Phalaenopsis. If you don't love orchids, you need to get this one because the smell is wonderful It started to produce a flower spike very quickly after I placed it in the tent It did not burn but this one was on the lowest shelf 
all the way in the back. It did not receive all that much light, but it did continue to grow. And Phalaenopsis is typically a lower light orchid because the inside of the tent has that reflective surface. All the light really just bounces back. And I noticed that some plants that were on the second or the third level of the shelf, quite far away from the light and in the back, would still get very, very red leaves, especially Hoyas. My Hoyas sigillatis was on the second shelf. In the back, the leaves were very red. So that reflection was enough. That really tells you how strong the light is. Remember, this light is typically used for growing vegetables. Of course, it can be used for, for growing house plants, but in that tent, it is way too intense for any house plant that I know, aside maybe from cacti and succulents. Another plant that did really fantastic is my Hoya Obscura, and I will attach B-roll because the plant is all the way up there and it is tangled in all the Hoyas. You know, I did that a couple of weeks ago and I thought it was a great idea and it is because it looks fabulous, but also it isn't because now all the vines are intertwined and I will never get that off of there. It will just turn into a Hoya wall and I'm fine with that. I really am. I'm really fine with that. I actually posted the photo of my Hoya Obscura on Instagram. It got red leaves within five days, I think. The normal LED light was never able to do that, no matter how close I kept it to it. It wasn't even under the light, it was actually hanging on the side of the tent, half of it inside, half of it outside. My Hoya undulata didn't grow as fast. That's the first thing. The second thing, the internodal spaces are very short, so it kind of has that cabbagey growth. I'm gonna show it to you. I actually transferred my Hoya undulata to semi-hydro after the root millibug fiasco, and this is how it looks now. It did not lose any of the leaves. I don't see any of the leaves damaged by the dish soap, which is I, amazing. When I put it in the tent, I think it only had two leaves, and it grew about four leaves in the tent, so these three and this one and you can see they are very clumped together. They're very close together. And it wasn't until I took it out of the tent that it started to push out this longer vine, and we are having this as a new leaf. You can see the new vine goes all the way up here. It's growing really fast, and I'm very happy about that. I did notice that the leaves were starting to get smaller in the tent. That's the thing with Hoyas. Sometimes when you give them a very strong light, you will start to get smaller leaves. They will be redder and all of that, but they will also start to get smaller. Some of these Hoyas, when you give them less light, you will actually start to get bigger leaves. And I noticed the same thing with Hoya undulata. The more light I give it, the leaves start to get smaller and they, they, they kind of start to close. I don't like that look. It looks terrifying. You know, Hoya undulata on itself you kind of looks intimidating, terrifying, whatnot. But when you give it abundance of light, the leaves kind of close and it starts to look very, well, not as pretty. I think this plant really does better in light that is not so bright. Whether it will be able to bloom or not, we will see. Hopefully it does bloom soon, but I'm just currently extremely happy that I got a vine out of this Hoya out of this seemingly terrifying Hoya that everyone is afraid of. It's not very difficult at all, to be honest with you. Another plant that did extremely well is my silver Hoya lacunosa. I got this as Hoya croniana. It ain't it. This is another plant that got some burns, and I think we lost a couple of leaves. You can see there are some burns there from the dishwashing detergent. Yep, quite noticeable. What happened in the tent? The leaves grew really nicely. They grew very small. You can see how small they are. They continued to grow very small, very silver. Sometimes they would even be pink. I took it out of the tent and then I got this vine. Now that's the contrast. Look at that. Now the leaves are silvery, half silver, half green with silver splash. But some of the leaves towards the base of that vine are very big compared to the rest of them. Also, it is growing much faster, in my opinion, outside of the tent. This is because this is simply a Hoya that doesn't require all that much 
light. You don't really need strong light. If you want to maintain these smaller leaves, you will benefit from higher light. And if you want them to be so silvery, in my opinion, you know, this plant did really well both in and out of the tent. I would even argue that it does better outside, but it actually grew quite a lot. I mean, this plant is only several months old and I received it as a small cutting. You are growing really well. I'm so proud of this plant. The next example is not the happiest one. It's my Hoya Cortesi. A lot of the leaves are missing. You can see this bare vine here. And this isn't because Hoya Cortesi is difficult to grow. It actually never dropped a leaf on me until I treated it with dishwashing detergent. And you can see I lost a lot of the leaves. They just kept falling off second or third day. It was a small three to four note cutting and it grew really well. It's about a year old now and you know it didn't it's not a terrible loss of course the leaves that I lost but I wish it didn't. It really did well in the grow tent. It grew really fast. It actually did quite enjoy the higher light if I say so myself. It still grows well outside of the tent but if I had to say, I, I would say that it grew a bit faster in the tent. It's really one of my favorite Hoyas. The leaves are absolutely gorgeous. They are so, so, so pretty. Some of the other plants that did really well is Hoya sigillatis. This plant, I would say, did the best. It absolutely loved the light. It was on the second shelf, as I said before. The leaves got very beautiful, very beautiful reddish color. Unfortunately, some of them are burned because of the dishwashing detergent, but it grew really fast. It absolutely enjoyed the light there, and I'm very happy with the growth. Some plants that didn't do so well are Hoya obobata, Hoya lobby, Hoya keri. Hoya obobata and Hoya keri are Hoyas that I assumed would like slightly higher light, so they were indeed closer, but still off to the side of the light. I did not keep any of the plants directly under the light except of those very highlight orchids or what I thought are very highlight orchids. So Hoya Keri and Hoya Obobata were off to the side of the light and the leaves got bleached. They got very, very pale green, no matter how much I watered them. Now, once they are outside of the tent, the leaves are starting to get that darker green color. The growth was fine on both of my Obavata and Kerry. They did grow really well, but I do have to say that now in less intense light, it seems to me that they are growing faster. My Hoya Lobby absolutely hated the tent. It got burnt, it got yellow leaves, it did not like it, it looked like leaves are boiling, even though it was on the lowest shelf, it still did not like it. It was shaded by other plants, but it just wasn't the light for this Hoya. Hoya Wayeti did enjoy, in fact, the tent. It was one of the Hoyas that was closest to the light and the leaves got absolutely red. They were completely red and they got smaller and smaller and smaller. The reason I put it so close to the light is I was trying to make it bloom faster to see if I can get a peduncle from this way. I didn't. I actually got the peduncle once it took it out of the tent and the leaves are now much more normal. They are starting to get bigger. So this is another proof that Hoya leaves do, in fact, get smaller as the light intensifies. I also had a couple of philodendrons in there, philodendron subhastatum and philodendron melanochrysum, and both of them did really well, but both of those philodendrons were on the bottom of the shelf, so they were the lowest in the tent. They were to the edge of the shelf, so they were closer to the light than some of the plants in the back, because I could put two rows of the plants on the shelves. They did not get burned, they did enjoy the light, and I think it was just the right amount of light for them. So all the way on the bottom and then closer a bit to the light. Those were the plant updates. Now the good, the bad and the ugly. The good, well, you will never run out of light. The light is indeed very strong. It's very pleasant to the eyes. It's not harsh like some of the LED lights that I use that are 6,500 Kelvin. The light, again, can cover a lot of the area, I believe, and that is why I'm using it now outside of the tent. I do realize there is a lot of light leakage. I could get more out of this light if it was in the tent, but I just don't have plants that are so high light. I don't have plants that require that amount of light to be in the tent, and I don't have the space. If I had the space, I would consider it, but then again, there are some other issues that I will talk about a bit later. 
Another good thing is this is an actual grow light. You know exactly what the spectrum is and you know what you're getting for your money. There are graphs available that will tell you that. These regular LED lights or the LED lights that are marketed as grow lights but are $20, $30 on sites like AliExpress, they don't provide you with that information. You could be just getting any LED light. You know, they, they do have some type of a description but there are no graphs, there are no measurements, nothing. This light does have that. Now the bad things, the light way too strong for that tent, 70 times 70. I had to turn the light down to 50% and then to 40%. And I'm a person who likes to get the most out of his things. So to have a 150 watt light and to use it at 50% of the strength is just not gonna do it for me. Also, if I was buying the light and if I paid $140 and I could only use 50% of the power that this light can output, I would not enjoy that. So that's the negative thing for me. The reflection in the tent is way too strong. It is perfectly fine now. None of my plants are burning when I'm using it outside of the tent, but of course the effect is lessened because again, there is no reflection. My walls are not covered with aluminum foil. Should I do that? No. Anyways, <laughs> crazy idea. I'm still very satisfied with the light. All of the plants that are in that area are doing really, really well. I can see all of them are growing really well. Even those on the shelf here, most of the light they're getting is from that Mars Hydro light. The plants in the bottom, those are some variegated monsteras. There is an anthurium and then Raphidophora in the back. They're also benefiting from the light. Plants on this shelf, on the top of this Ikea shelf, also benefiting from the light. It covers a wide area. It is supposed to cover one by one meter, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, the closer you are to the light, the intensity is stronger. And then as you go lower, the intensity weakens. But that's fine for me because in the bottom, I can put some low light plants like spedophyllum, some begonias. And then because of this shelf, you know, I can put some of the higher light plants closer to the top. I will turn on the light for you so you could see how strong it is. You'll just have to wait a moment. It's just right there. All of those plants, really, there's no any additional light. They benefit from that. Quite strong. I do have to turn it off because it makes my face look very dark. Just showing you how much of the area it can illuminate really tells you how strong it is. So if you are going to get this light for something that is not the tent, I would absolutely get it. I, and this is the part where I tell you, do I think it's worth it? Yes. D would I buy it myself? Yes. I am actually considering buying that light or something similar so I can put it right here for to kind of illuminate this area. I think with two or three of these, you can really provide a light for a lot of the plants, depending of course how big your space is and how you arrange the plants in that space. I would not use it in a grow tent. I don't want to use it at 50%. I want to use it at 100%. If I pay $140 for a light, I want to get the most out of it. It's good to have the dimmable option. Maybe, you know, if you're using it in your room and in summer, maybe you don't need 100%, that's fine. But I don't want to use it at 50% all the time. Another thing about the growth tent that I didn't like and why I wouldn't really use it is because, you know, I work in a very small space here. Oftentimes when I water, there will be water spillage and the water will just go under the tent and I cannot leave it like that. And this is actually why I took down the tent after two months. It wasn't the first time that it happened, but I decided it is the last time because before I would, you know, move the tent, clean underneath, but this time I, just, I was just not willing to do that. To clean under the tent, you really need to get everything out lift it, clean, wipe the water, maybe put even a towel so because the bottom of the tent will be wet. If you're working with wood floors, you really need to get all that moisture away. So that wasn't very convenient for me. If you're not a person who spills stuff, great for you. The tent is maybe then good for you, but also another aspect for me is that it just takes up a lot of space for me. And now, the ugly. My light is flawed. 
it does not want to turn off. I have to unplug it to get it to turn off. The light would flicker, It I would turn it off and then it would turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. I knew that one day it would show its true colors. It was just flickering. So let me just turn it on and turn it off. Oh, there we go. Wow, I'm gonna blind myself. So, pretty sure that is not supposed to happen. So I just, you know, to prevent that, I just turn it on and I unplug it here from the power. Blink now, you bet. And you know, it is fixable. You can just unplug it or you can, there is a warranty on the lights so you can return it. I did not want to return mine because the shipping process between me and U European Union is very complicated. I do recognize that this is just a thing with my light or maybe I have a poltergeist, who knows. But you know, despite this, I would still get the light myself. Again, as I told you, I do intend to buy the same light and hang it here. I was actually thinking maybe I can go for a stronger light and then turn off some of these LED lights on the shelves. Those were my impressions on the Mars Hydro light. Again, I do think it's a good light. There are lights out there that are better. You have to understand in terms of actual grow lights, this is considered a budget grow light. When I was checking the prices, higher quality grow lights go for 250 for $500. And that's just the amount of money I would never give. I'm still thinking about this making $150 purchase because, you know, I'm very cheap. <laughs> I'm just thinking if I can get away with the cheaper lights, why would I need to get that one? But in all honesty, I do notice the difference between the regular LED lights that I'm using and the grow lights. The plants do seem to grow much faster. It's just about getting the distance right. Now, when it's outside of the tent, I do notice that Hoyas, even those in the back, are growing actually faster than they were when they were in the tent. Anyways, this is now turning into a ramble instead of a review or slash update. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and you can also subscribe to the channel. I never mind when you do. Do let me know down in the comments below what type of grow lights you are using. Are you using actual grow lights? What they are? Or are you just cheap like me and using the <laughs> basically cheapest light you can find? I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye! I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my special tier. Thank you so much, the Noob Daniels and Spinach Geek. You're very generous and I really appreciate your support. Also, a big, big shout out to my $5 patrons. Double the shout out for Elena Coddington, my one anonymous patron, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Dinsla, Hoyas and Whatnots, Kelsey Jager, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B, Mary, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Nerdy Kathy, Tanya, Vicky Dingler, and Zlokov Nipponi. Thank you so much, I really, really appreciate you. Also, a big shout out for my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Becca Panyard, Brianna Phillips, Catherine G, Jerry's Garden, Kara Cactus, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nikki, and Ringlove. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline and Jacinta. Thank you all so much for your support. I hope that you enjoyed the videos. Let me know what you think about the growth updates. And if you think they're not great, then don't tell me about it because I'm now living in an illusion that the light did some magic to my plants, especially the locations. I will never shut up how the locations are growing well. I hope you're doing well and I will see you very soon. Bye. <laughs> I'm like, forgot the buys. Bye, Kimiro.